Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's take a look at what happened as far as the global market is concerned. And it was a weak picture as far as the US markets were concerned, down anywhere between 1% to 2% in trade. Europe also ended up much lower. But Asia, as of now, it's a decent start for Asia. Most of the Asian markets are doing well. The SX Nifty uh, has, has come off the highs of the day. It was up almost 85 points at one point of time, now up almost 58 points, but does manage to indicate that we might have a positive opening when we start for trade today. How did the ADRs pan out in trade? Two numbers that came out on Friday reacting positively. ICICI Bank up 5%. The Dr. Reddy's uh, number came out during market hours, but the commentary came in after market hours. That ended up almost at 3.5% in trade. The other uh, numbers were rather weak in trade. All, all of them, other stocks uh, ended lower in trade. How did the Nifty pan out in trade? The Nifty was down another close to 100 points. So we came in very close to breaching the 10,000 mark in trade. But the mid cap and small cap did manage to outperform the Nifty in trade. The Nifty Bank was rather weak in trade. The Nifty Bank was down 1.6%. The Nifty PSU Bank, however, holding out, it was just down almost uh, four tenths of a percent. Now, as far as uh, uh, the sectors are concerned, the FMCG and IT sectors were rather weak in trade. The FMCG sector down one and a half percent. The Nifty IT sector down almost close to two percent in trade. So, the, so the heavyweights actually uh, pulling down uh, the indices also. Flows FIs were net sellers to the tune of 1300 crores. DIs bought in 1900 crores in the cash market. Now, how did uh, the Nifty pan out in trade? We were down 95 points. Uh, what uh, led the fall was basically the heavyweights. TCS, ITC, Access Bank, and Kotak Mahindra Bank were down in trade. Reliance pro provided a little bit of support. HDFC provided a little bit of support, and uh, UPL came out with numbers. But nevertheless, it was uh, the, it was the bears that had their way as far as the market was concerned. Even uh, it was the first day of the new series. On the FNO side, uh, fresh short positions were seen on the Nifty. We are coming in very close to the 10,000 mark in trade. The Nifty Bank also saw fresh shorts. Open interest built up of 6%. Uh, now, if you're looking at uh, the open interest built up, uh, 10,000 seems to be the big uh, uh, support that the market is looking at at this point of time. Uh, there's high open interest built up at this point of time, but uh, and, and the resistance is higher at 10,500. If you're looking at where positions were taken, given the fact that the Nifty was rather weak in trade, put writers were shedding positions in open interest, but at 10,000 and 10,100, still put writers are active in trade. So 10,000 becomes a very, very crucial level. If that is broken out comprehensively, there could be more selling pressure that's coming in. Uh, Adani Power is the only stock in the FNO band. Uh, the Nifty PCR coming down, the Bank Nifty PCR also coming down in trade, given the fact that the market was rather weak in trade. A couple of stocks I want to point out, uh, Equitas and Ujjivan, both of them saw fresh shots on high open interest build up because of the news that came out in terms of the RBI indicating that they have to list uh, the small finance bank. So a holding company discount uh, probably has come in in both these counters. Uh, Grasim for one saw fresh shots, open interest build up of 16%, that on the short side. And finally, Raymond came out with strong set of numbers, uh, reacting positively. Short covering was seen on the counter. The counter ended up almost 12%. But these are all the domestic cues. Let's, let's go across to Aslinda Amin for all the top international headlines. Brazilian President-elect Bolsonaro has promised clean government and what he calls the pacification of the country after his victory in the runoff election. The right-wing former army captain had almost 56% support, with almost all the votes counted. In his victory speech, Bolsonaro also promised to reduce the size and cost of government and to reform foreign policy. Support for Germany's governing parties plunged in the latest state electoral test, with the Christian Democratic Union suffering its worst showing in Hesse in more than 50 years. Chancellor Merkel's main ally, the Christian Social Democrats, won its lowest share of the vote there since the Second World War. The Green Party almost doubled its support, and the far-right AFD won seats for the first time. Thailand's leading political party has picked a new chief ahead of elections anticipated next year. Poi Thai has named Viroj Payan as leader and will decide later if he'll be its candidate for prime minister. Viroj is a police lieutenant general and was the only name on the ballot. Thailand has been run by a military government since a coup in 2014. An election is expected between February and May next year. And it's been confirmed that the boss of Thailand's King Power duty-free conglomerate died in a helicopter crash in England on Saturday. Billionaire Vichai C. Watana Prabha bought Leicester City Football Club in 2010, helping to fund its surprise Premier League title six years later. The aircraft came down after 45 minutes after he'd watched the team play. No one on board survived. 
Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok and Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Haslinda Amin. This is Bloomberg. They've shown themselves in the past the long-term consequences are rather dire. It uh, not only brings about uh, a lower level of demand, probably through uh, a significant recession, but uh, it also spurs on growth in alternative fuels and, uh, and growth in competition from the United States and, uh, and other non-OPEC countries. So the Ed, have you ever seen... Right. Have you ever seen the, you know, OPEC and its allies kind of go from one thing to the other quite so quickly? So two days ago, we had the Saudi Arabian um, oil minister saying that they're going to pump as much as they need to. And now, because of inventories, because of concern about economics around the world, they're talking about curtailing it. Well, they're, they're a little bit confused about the market. They didn't look at the thing they've been studying for the last three years, namely how financial flows of the market impact prices. Uh, they didn't look to see that when oil went to uh, $86 of, uh, for Brent crude and uh, WTI went up, that uh, that was a function of financial flows of the market. Uh, the uh, managed money situation in the market went from one record level of a ratio of longs to shorts to another, went right through the old record of 10 to 1 longs versus shorts to 11 to 12 to 13 to 14. The price went up with it. Uh, and then uh, for a number of reasons associated in part uh, with the fundamentals not changing, there was a sell-off. That sell-off has continued. So we've actually seen two $10 swings that have nothing to do with market fundamentals, have a lot to do with financial flows. And uh, had they just uh, waited a bit, they probably would see that uh, markets are going to get tighter by the end of the fourth quarter. Prices will go up. It's a volatile world. And that's the lesson they should learn, yeah. not, not to speak uh, on the basis of, uh, of financial flows. Well, back to local equity markets. Stock of the day is Imami Paper Mills. Good set of numbers reported by the company. On top line front, we're looking at a more than 30% jump there at a number of 407 crore as compared to nearly 314 crore. In terms of the EBITDA performance, it's been a strong show. But then let's address the profitability. The number stands at 17 crore as compared to nearly 50 lakhs that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. EBITDA performance of the company has risen more than 100% at a number of 61% as compared to nearly 20 8.5% and in terms of margins they've shot up by 15% as compared to 9% that we saw in the corresponding quarter. What goes behind the making of good set of numbers, higher revenue and cost efficiency measures which have been undertaken by the company, we've seen a sharp drop coming in in the raw material expenses of the company which has aided the operational efficiency apart from the decline that we've seen in power and fuel costs and employee costs. Raw material costs as a percent your net sales have declined to 66% as compared to 71% and power and fuel expenses also have declined to 4% as compared to 5.5% while employee expenses also have slid for the company. Apart from operating efficiency, we've also seen a sharp jump coming in in the other income, almost more than 50% rise out there, which has led to a good bottom line show for the company. Uh, if you look at the balance sheet position of the company, uh, we're looking at an overall reduction uh, in terms of the long-term uh, debt of the company. Uh, if you look at uh, the short-term borrowing, that's almost come down by 5% while the long-term borrowing of the company has uh, come down by 12% in the six months from March 2018 to September 2018, leading to an overall decline in the total borrowing by as much as 7%. So crude oil prices, they continue to trade on a downward bias. Crude futures tumbled for a third straight week uh, as crumbling equity markets stoked concerns uh, about, uh, about a slowdown in energy demand growth. Uh, Friday's 0.4% growth on the New York Stock Exchange wasn't enough uh, to halt a 2.2% decline uh, over the last one week. Also, U.S. inventory data suggests that, in, uh, that drillers are intending to step up crude oil output, uh, as a result of which we've seen that crude oil prices have shed almost 8% in value in the last one month, uh, completely wiping out the gains of August as well as September. On the base metal side, copper, copper nickel, tin and lead uh, were all, all dropped in trade, while zinc and aluminium, uh, they snapped their multi-day losing streak. Uh, copper futures, they traded lower for a second consecutive week uh, in New York, driving industrial metals lower on concerns that trade was will curb economic growth and, as well as demand. Pressure is also seen uh, building up on the prices as yuan slump against the dollar. Uh, is uh, is making commodities more expensive for the largest buyers, which is China. Uh, as far as the precious metal concerned, uh, gold 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 futures rose for a fourth straight week in, in New York, hitting their longest winning streak since January. 
Well, amongst the stocks that we're watching in trade today includes Vinati Organics. It reported a very strong set of numbers for uh, the second quarter. Uh, revenue growth of 57%. EBITDA more than doubled to 95 crores. On the other hand, net profit uh, came in at 65 crores as compared to a number of 29 crores for the year ago quarter. Uh, this was on account of the lower uh, cost of material, lower finance costs and also other income that aided uh, the bottom line boost. Next on the list that we have is DV's Labs. Again, a very good set of numbers, 44% growth in revenues, EBITDA grew by 85%. EBITDA margin also moved up sizably from 31% to 40%. And if you look at the net profit number, uh, that has come in about 92% um, higher. Uh, some part of it uh, can be attributed to the forex gain of 53 crores as compared to just 11 crores in the previous uh, year ended quarter. But aside of this uh, forex gain, also it's a strong uh, quarter for the company. Uh, Nestle uh, reported a good set of numbers as well, revenue growth of 17%, net profit growth growth of a um, higher 30 percent even if you look at the operational performance the EBITDA margin has increased by about 150 basis points to 24.7 percent Next on the list is Jindal Stainless. This one, uh, uh, you know, uh, disappointed because despite a revenue growth of 18%, it reported a net loss of 36 crores for the quarter as compared to a profit in the previous uh, year quarter. Uh, there, remember, was an exceptional loss of 53 crores in this quarter. But aside of that, even if you look at the operational performance, the EBITDA margins uh, were uh, have fallen and EBITDA was also down about 10% on a YOY basis. So weak set of numbers. Uh, same is the case with H. HT Media revenue declined by 6%. They reported an EBITDA loss of about 19 crores. And even if you look at the net loss number, that has come in at 39 crores as compared to a profit number of 77 crores in the year ago quarter. Uh, they have an exceptional loss of 24 crores in this quarter. That is a contingent loss uh, that they have provided for related to a dispute pending hearing. Uh, but even if you keep that aside, other expenses have risen, uh, cost of uh, input costs have risen, that has led to a bit of a loss. And then you also have very high finance costs, which have weighed on the performance. Finally, you have Cox and Kings, which will be in focus. They will sell their education subsidiary uh, to a UK based company for an enterprise value of 4380 crores. Remember, the market cap of Cox and King, uh, Kings was uh, 3230 crores. They have a debt as uh, of about 3900 crores as of March 18. Uh, so, overall, this is a positive development. Do watch out for this name as also for Axis Bank, which will sell 5% uh, of its stake in NSDL to HDFC Bank, so an inflow of 163 crores for Axis. BPCL will be the first oil marketing company to report its numbers today. Now, if you see the headline numbers for BPCL, the revenue is expected to be high by nearly 9% to close to 78,181 crore rupees, while net profit now that is expected to decline nearly 22% compared to last quarter. EBITDA is expected to be low by nearly 18%, while the margins are expected to contract to 4.1%. Now, the gross refining margin that is the key number for the oil marketing company now that is expected to come in at around $6.5 per barrel versus $7.5 per barrel reported by the company in the last quarter. Now, it is expected to be a muted quarter on the back of lower inventory gains and a weaker rupee. Now, ex-inventory, that is excluding inventory gains, if you see, it is expected to be a steady performance when it comes to the refining and the marketing business of the oil marketing company. Now, a relatively lower increase in crude oil prices would result into a lower inventory gains for the oil marketing company. Now, Brent crude averaged around $75.89 per barrel in the second quarter versus $74.97 per barrel in the first quarter. So this relatively low increase in crude oil prices would result into a lower inventory gains. Now, if you see the marketing business or due to steady fuel margins, the second quarter is expected to be uh, steady for the marketing business. If you see now the gross marketing margins earned on sale of every liter of petrol, now that average around 1.6 rupees per liter versus 1.5 rupees per liter for BP sale. While for diesel, it averaged around 2.2 rupees per liter versus 1.9 rupees per liter. Now, on the operational side, if you see the crude throughput is expected to be low by nearly 3%. Now, that is because of the fire incident in one of its refinery that was located in Mumbai. Uh, the crude throughput is expected to be lower, while sales are expected to be low by nearly 0.6% uh, to 10.9 million metric tons. That is because of seasonal weakness seen in the second quarter. Uh, key things to watch out for now, that would include the company's crude sourcing strategy as there will be Iran embargo and the decline in Venezuela crude production. Also, clarity on the strategy, how they are going to absorb this one rupee uh, impact on petrol and diesel prices will be a keen thing to watch out for and the impact on earnings of uh, BPCL because of this fire accident at Mumbai will be the key things to watch out for from the BPCL earnings.
Well, as far as ICICI Bank uh, Q2 numbers are concerned, uh, the net profit came in at 909 crores as compared to an estimate of about 950 crores. Uh, so while one could argue that the numbers missed estimates, but remember that the range of estimates was very broad. And while there is a, miss, a marginal miss on the pad, uh, the quality of earnings has improved for the bank. If you look at the core operating profit growth, that is X, the subsidiary stake sale, uh, that is ICICI uh, Lombard stake sale gains, which uh, is there in the base quarter. So, uh, keeping that aside, the core operating profit growth has come in at 16% on a YOI basis and that has happened after a gap of 3 to 4 years. Even if you look at the fee income growth, that has come in at 17%, which is a multi-quarter high. Uh, if you talk about the growth parameters, the loan growth has picked up pace which and has come in at an 11 quarter high of 13%. Uh, the domestic book, that was also strong with a 16% growth. Uh, provisions, on the other hand, declined sequentially to 3994 crores uh, and in addition, the provision coverage ratio has also seen an improvement sequentially of 330 basis points and now stands at about 69%. I remember this PCR improvement of 330 basis points is in addition uh, to the improvement of 560 basis points that we had seen in the June ended quarter. So over the last two quarters itself, the bank has managed to increase its provision coverage ratio from nearly 60% uh, to about 70%, 70 which is definitely a positive. Even if you look at the asset quality, the trends seem to be stabilizing over there. Uh, there we did see some moderation in fresh NPLs and also decline in the stressed uh, loans outside of those NPLs. So if you look at the gross NPA number, that has come in at 9.3% as compared to 9.65% in the June ended quarter. The gross slippage is also came down 23% sequentially to 3117 crores. That uh, absolute addition is also once again the lowest in the last 12 quarters. And even if you look at the stress book, there was a net reduction. It has come down from 24,800 crores to about 21,800 crores. And not only that, but the bank is also guided for the slippages number to reduce sizably in FY19 over FY18. They did disclose some exposure to ILNFS, but um, they haven't disclosed the quantum uh, but with the management concerns now having been put to rest the focus uh, has moved to fundamentals and earnings and uh, did ICSA a bank manage to deliver in this quarter on earnings growth then I would say yes uh, largely brokerages have um, more or less retain their rating on the stock with marginal tweaks coming in from select broking firms. Uh, but the it, ICCI Bank continues to remain uh, amongst the top picks for uh, many of them while they have said that the valuation that about 1.8, 1.9 times FI19 price to book value remain attractive. So overall, uh, the ADRs did end about 4 or 5 percent higher. So we should see a positive cue for this one. The threat has always been there in terms of someone breaking into a building. A greater concern now for a lot of firms is the idea of some sort of espionage, either corporate espionage or insider attack where someone wants to steal from the company and then leave. My name is Demian Olaf. I am one of the principal owners of a firm called The Core Group. We are a security evaluation and testing and training firm, but the real fun thing is the, the actual physical penetration testing. So breaking in at night usually, certain firms that have research wings that have very sensitive information, someone could steal that information physically, steal the product or the circuit boards and then leave. This underdoor tool that has showed up in more videos than I can count now is probably one of the cheapest things for us to manufacture. It has played a role in at least 90% of every successful entry job we've ever had. 
So you could use a small, like the kind of card reader you'd see on a building. We often will use the larger sized ones that you'll see kind of around parking lots or uh, garages. Uh, these are often a class of device called a telephony access control system. So you can put a battery pack in there, a little boost converter, and then it's all a self-contained unit. Just flip a switch, it powers on, and any badge that gets within the vicinity of a foot or two, you're gonna grab that badge data. Door King is incredibly popular. Uh, Linear is another one that's very popular. And these keys are all available just on industry supplied websites, catalogs. There's a lot of extra accessibility you can do inside of those cabinets. And yes, they are all key to like with a non-restricted key that's been the same for decades. Dave Kennedy, who owns a firm trusted sec, he's a big vape guy. So he'll breathe in a big cloud of, of you know, e-vape and just kind of blow it through the crack in the door, triggering that motion sensor on the secure side of the door. And you just see this big cloud come through the door and the door unlocks, and then Dave just walks in. Oftentimes when we show people the, the problem, like they've usually just had someone from facilities come out and either tighten up the door a little bit, or they'll just bolt a big metal plate over that part of the door. I like that, I like cheap solutions. All right, well, uh, there's lots to talk about, of course, uh, over the course of the day. You'll find all the live market action right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. But there are also several stories that are currently available on the website if you do choose to visit. First up, Tesla's chief executive officer, Elon Musk, has said that he was signing off of Twitter for a few days shortly after tweeting that the $20 million penalty that he was given for announcing on Twitter that he had funding to take the electric vehicle maker private was worth it. Soon, GST officers will study the behavioral patterns of certain taxpayers to nudge them to comply with tax laws in a departure from the current practice of focusing only on deterrent action to check evasion. The Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs has set up a nudge team to formulate a strategy on studying behavioral patterns of taxpayers and to use a segmented approach to encourage them to pay taxes, according to an official. In the week ahead, the Bank of England and Bank of Japan announced policy rate decisions after raising rates in August. The BOE is expected to stand pat, while the BOJ is also expected to maintain its policy settings. Apple hosts a new product event at which it's likely to introduce iPad Pros that use facial recognition to unlock and also new uh, Macs. Asia will get Japan retail sales and China manufacturing PMI, which will show whether U.S. sanctions have started to bite. U.S. jobless claims are also out this week. That's all you need to know going into trade this Monday, but up next is Indian Open, so do stay tuned. This is Bloomberg Quint.